championship. The whole the crowd has shown up in force they have to go for the this. Big valleys that go down so deep, you can't even see it. But you know what? I got a feeling that today we make a little bit of history. What type of history are they alluding to, Gary Stout? We have heard rumor that they are going to attempt to build a five-tier pyramid. And it certainly looks like they're going for it. The third tier is up. The fourth tier is under construction. And here goes the fifth tier girl. This is sending chills up and down my spine. I've never seen it before. Five teams high. You know, Dan, this has only been done twice before and never in a show and never on a crowd in front. Here comes a barefoot pyramid. Now, what exactly are they going to need to do? Well, they're going to have to execute to precision. That means very, very few, if any, falls. And here's their ballet line off to a great start. Janesville is known for having one of the best ballet lines ever. And let's look why. The spacing of the girls by using their arm to brace against one another, they keep that perfect spacing. Also, these girls have practiced hour after hour in the gymnasium in front of mirrors in backyards so that all their legs are just the right angle, all their legs are just the right height, their arms are together. It's like seeing the Rockettes in New York City. Coming up, we're going to see their dismount, if you will, as they head to shore. Now, the judges will be watching to see if they remain intact, that is, not letting go of each other's arms. The women are onto the shore. They made it. They did, and you know how they do that. They throw the handle with one hand, immediately grab onto the girl next to them so that they're all double arm braced in together. Gary, here comes the jumping competition. This is going to be key. Badgerland had some great jumps out there, but boy, look at the Rock Aqua Jays. They're off to a great start. Janesville is always incredible in this jumping. There's a four-man helicopter. Let me tell you why that's hard. Those skis are six feet long. Four of those fellows, that's 24 feet of skis going over nothing but a 14-foot wide jump ramp. And they nail it. All right, we got three guys on the ramp, one underneath. Look at that, a front flip, a back flip, and a helicopter with one ski underneath. I believe even the miniature pony is impressed. And Dan, equally impressive is the fact that 10 days ago, that very stage was underwater. Yeah, the city, in fact, has helped ease the flooding on this river so that the national championships could become a reality. That was two side-by-side -side prefab three-tier high pyramids from a dock start. Very impressive, and they must be racking up points. That same prefab side-by-side -side pyramid has now come around the bend, and they are attempting to get it up to four tiers, and they will be, I, I dare say, successful. And they did. You know, that's the first time we've seen one type of a pyramid then convert into another type of a pyramid. It shows a lot of creativity. As a judge, I'm going to give them some extra points for that. Doubles. How important is this to their score? Well, very, very important. As a matter of fact, Jamesville is also known for having a very, very strong Adagio app. They put casts of thousands, as we call it, out on the water. Ready to go around the boat one more time. One, two, three, four guys ripping around that boat. Look at the driver duck down so he doesn't get his head cut off. And the key thing here is that nobody sinks. They all scoot it up all the way around the boat. Very impressive. Look at the lines, the grace, and the beauty now. We're watching now one of the absolute strengths of James Bill individual strap doubles. Of course, it's very helpful for the girls to have a classical dance background, such as ballet, combined with gymnastics. The guys, they have to spend their winters in the gymnasium because it takes tremendous strength. Look at that, a swing up shoulder stand. I've never seen that maneuver executed in that fashion before. That was really very, very gorgeous. Gary, the question begs to be asked, how in the world do you get all of this talent, all this athleticism, out of these very small towns in the Midwest? Is it simply tradition? 
Dan, there's certainly tradition is a large part of it. Many of these teams are 20 plus years old and the children have grown up aspiring to be members of the water ski team. That's even more important than being a cheerleader uh, at, at high school or captain of the, uh, of the high school football team. How many people in that pyramid? 30. 30 individuals out there on the water working hand in hand or hand in foot, if you will, to build four tiers on the outside and three in the middle. This is very impressive, but is it enough, do you think, to overtake Badgerland? I think we're going to have to wait and see, but they put on a very, very impressive performance. Take a look at Jerry Lighting right there, the show director. Oh, he is grinning from ear to ear on the far right of the screen. Was it enough to overtake Badgerland? That is the question waiting to be answered. We are waiting for the official score right now. As we do that, let's take a look at this. The Toyota Radical it has to go to the Rock Aqua Jays of Janesville, Wisconsin for this five-tier pyramid. Never before built at the Nationals or in professional competition. Congratulations to the Rock Aqua Jays. Radical Maneuver brought to you by Toyota. I love it. And as we wait with the rest of the fans here on the shores of the Rock River, you can feel the tension in the air. Will it be Badgerland or the home team, the Rock Aqua Jays? The winners are next. Second place score, 2,056 points. First place score, 2,181 points. In second place with a score of 2,056, Badgerland Ski Team. is the exaltation of the Rock Aqua Jays as they realize they are back on top. How sweet this must be in front of their hometown. The Rock Aqua Jays pick up 2,181 points, just edging out Badgerland, who winds up with 2,056 points. Jerry, congratulations to you and your team. You guys have proven over the years that you are number one. You were indeed back and made number one once again on your home site through adversity. The flooding's affected you. How do you feel right now? <laughs> I feel great. Is this a true test? Was this the ultimate test to get over the flooding, to host the tournament one more time, knowing it's going up river next year? How badly did you want this? Well, we wanted this really bad because we've been working really, really, really hard trying to come back because the last couple of years we've had a lot of new skiers. This is a whole new batch. Almost no one here has been a national champion before. It's great for everybody, and uh, this is a team effort. We worked really hard at it. We had a huge discussion Thursday night how much we were gonna, how much we were gonna go, if we're gonna do the five high or not. And we decided to go for everything, and and it worked out. So. And so a final look at the final stand shows the Rock Aqua Jays in that most important number one slot, Badgerland finishing in second place. Congratulations and hats off to Little Crow out of Minnesota who winds up in seventh overall, their first time at the national championships. You know, Dan, the tradition is to throw the show director into the water, followed by everyone else on the team. Here goes Jerry. Well, Gary, stop. You see it. They're attesting to the fact they're number one in the country, the Rock Aqua Jays. They continue to celebrate and get themselves wet. What do you think was the key to their success here today? The key was they really wanted it. They had not won in two years. They were hungry. They won the Triple Crown, the Wisconsin State, the Lambs Farm, and now the Nationals. They did it all. And they are the number one team in the country. Thanks for joining us for the 1993 Diet Pepsi National Show Ski Championship. For Gary Stout, I'm Dan Devenham. We'll see you later.